Good morning, everyone. So Vanina and I studied a piece of a stained glass window from the Conque Abbey. It was designed by the French artist Pierre Soulages in 1994. And Pierre Soulages wanted some very specific visual properties. First, the glass must be color neutral. Then it must spread the light in all directions. We call it a diffuser. And finally, it must transmit as much light as possible into the abbey. It's very hard to combine all these properties in only one material. Let's take glass, for example. It transmits a lot, but doesn't diffuse at all. On the contrary, paper is a very good diffuser. The shape are completely blurred, but it doesn't transmit so much. But it takes more to discredit Soulage. He spent seven years experimenting until he reached his goal. And here it is. This is an agglomerate of many different types of glasses, melted and pressed together. So our mission was to experiment on some setups to explore the optical properties of this sample. And in this presentation, we will focus on the three main characteristics that Soulage described. So first, let's see if the stained glass is really non-colored. We took a picture of the sky, and then a picture of the sample illuminated by this same sky. As you can see on the chromaticity diagram, the color of the sample is nearly the same as the one of the sky. And visually, you can't tell the difference. So yes, the stained glass is color neutral for daylight. Then we have to investigate the diffuse transmission. Is it a good diffuser? In order to do that, we placed a test pattern two centimeters behind the sample. And as you can see on th this picture, shapes are completely blurred. So visually, at least, it is a good diffuser. Now let's go further and quantify how the light is spread after the sample. So we measure the regions for different angles and Theoretically, a perfect diffuser has a constant radiance. But here, as you can see on the blue curve, although some light is spread in all directions, it's not at all a perfect diffuser. And finally, let's investigate about how much light is transmitted by the sample. So one way to measure the transmittance is to send a pencil of light and to collect all the transmitted light in an integrating sphere. By making the ratio of these two quantities, you have the transmittance between 0 and 1. On the right, this is an equivalent configuration. Actually, because of the reversing path of the light, it is equivalent to send a pencil of light and collect the light in all directions, or to send light in every direction and collect it in a pencil of light. And that's what we did. But we noticed that light travels a lot sideways inside a sample. As you can see on this picture, the halo of diffusion is huge. So this is a quite unique property, and this is what makes the sample bright and diffusing at the same time. But for us, it was a bit of a problem. Indeed, as the light is spread in the very large area, if the integrating sphere is too small, we have losses. So we need to eliminate an area that is much larger than the pencil of light. Then we take a picture of the sample. But remember, in order to consider only a pencil of light, we have to apply a mask on MATLAB. But the difficulty is that the sample is very inhomogeneous. It would be a lot better if we could average on a larger area but it would also mean that we need to illuminate a larger area. So to conclude, we needed a much bigger integrating sphere. It was sadly not available in the lab. But eventually, we found one, the sky. On a day of snowy weather, the sky has a perfect homogeneous brightness. To prevent light entering the sample from the edges and from the bottom, we put it on a box with a hole. We did the measurement and find a transmittance of 47%. In comparison with paper, uh, it is more than twice the transmittance of paper. 
And uh, we wanted to validate uh, our setup. So we measured the transmittance of paper with a calibrated instrument, and we found 20%. So this is close enough to validate our measurement on the paper, uh, even though if it's still not perfect. Uh, maybe it was because, because we were surrounded by buildings. So next time, uh, let's go to Lapland. <laughs>